Oh, thank you very much, New Hampshire. This is a great honor to be with you tonight. We've got plenty of time. It's a Saturday night. We have plenty. You set every record they just told me in this arena. Now, I don't know how old it is, but it's not new. And we got a lot of people outside. Thank you very much. And I'm thrilled to be here and really the home of a very special group of people, first in the nation. Thank you very much, President Trump. No, I kept you first in the nation, and uh, some other people didn't. They didn't even show up for the election. You know who I'm talking about. Let's see how an unknown congressman, nobody ever heard of this guy. Let's see how he does. He might beat Biden. Wouldn't that be nice of you? I think that uh, Democrats should vote for the congressman just to send a signal. You don't abandon us like that. They're not, nobody going to abandon New Hampshire. Nobody going to abandon New Hampshire. He just picked up a lot of votes, by the way. Since 2016, you and I have been in this battle side by side, taking on the entire corrupt system in Washington like no one else has ever done before. Nobody else has done what we've done. The Washington Swamp has done everything in its power to take away your voice. But this Tuesday, it is finally going to turn you away. Your voice is going to be given back. You had a voice just three years ago. And I believe that New Hampshire is going to speak very loudly and clearly. With your vote, you are going to send a message straight to crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country. Biden and his radical thugs have weaponized the DOJ and his protectors and the fake news media right back and look at all of them. Whoa! Fake news. The fake news. Three days from now, we're going to win New Hampshire, and then we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden, and we are going to make America great again. The primary is this Tuesday, January 23rd. Get ready. I'll be with you. I'll be up here with you. I'll be with you. You know, we just got back from Iowa. It was cold, 40 degrees below zero. Would you say that's cold? That makes this look like a warm place, right? <laughs> but it was always cold, but everybody turned out and we won in the history, in the history of the caucus. Nobody's ever gotten a number like we got. We broke the record, just like they broke it tonight. And I have the same feeling right here. Frankly, I have the same feeling all over the country. This country has such great people. So you need to get every patriot you know and turn them out to vote in record numbers. We have to not win. We have to win by a lot because we have to send a signal in November that we're coming. We're coming. And if you need any information, all you have to do is go to nh.com. Donald J. Trump, did you ever hear of him? Dot com. Okay? You'll get all that information, so get out and vote. This is a big deal. The whole world is watching now in New Hampshire. Last week I said that. Place called Iowa. Great. Now I'm saying it. The whole world is watching you. We took care of them and we're taking care of you. But now is the time for the Republican Party to unify. We have to unify because we have very important business ahead of us. We have to get together and we have to do what we have to do. You know, with a party of common sense. You know that, right? With a party of common sense. Instead of wasting hundreds of millions of dollars attacking Trump, we need to come together and focus all of our energy and resources on defeating crooked Joe Biden. We have to do it. We have to get him out. He is a threat to democracy. He really is. He's a threat to democracy. We have to get him out. You know why he's a threat to democracy, right? A couple of reasons, but you know the first reason? 
He's grossly incompetent. It's true. We'll end up in a world war because of this guy. The bombs roar. Look at the Middle East now again. Here we go again. The bombs are being dropped all over the place. They have no idea what they're doing. The Secretary of Defense is missing in action. And then they find him. You know how he's running the war? Laptop from his stomach laying in a hospital bed. Can't do that. The same people that gave us Afghanistan, that removal, the worst removal, the worst, I think the most embarrassing event in the history of our country. Those are the people that are running these wars. Nobody ever gets fired. I fired Comey. I fired a lot of people. In fact, people said I fired so many people. When somebody's bad, you got to fire them. Here's a guy, they don't win wars, they don't do anything right, and nobody ever gets fired. I guess they know too much. Does anyone know what that means? I know what that means. Sadly, not everyone is willing to put our country first. This is called America First territory. It's America First. So here in New Hampshire, Nikki Haley, I know her well. The guy screaming, bird brain. Only in New Hampshire does that happen. But she's made an unholy alliance with the rhinos, the never Trumpers, Americans for no prosperity, globalists, the radical left communists, and they want to get liberals and Biden supporters. That's what they want. And you know, you have a governor here that allows Democrats to vote in the Republican primary. What's that all about? Your governor. And you know, he'll be coming and he'll be calling me after the election. He says, oh, sir, I just want to congratulate you very much. I want to. This guy allows independents, many of whom are Democrats, independents and Democrats to vote in the Republican primary. What the hell is that all about? But despite that, we're going to win by very big numbers. In Iowa, nearly 50% of Haley's voters think of this. With the vote that we had just a week ago, she came in last, by the way, she came in third. And Vivek did great, and he just endorsed us, you know that, right? Good man. He's got a lot to say, Vivek. He's got, and he says it fast. He's a good man, he endorsed us wholeheartedly, and uh, we agree on so many different things. But think of this number, 50% of Haley's voters said, they were voting for Joe Biden in November. What the hell kind of a Republican candidate is that? And you're going to see in a couple of minutes, we're going to bring up the governor, a, a fantastic governor from South Carolina. But almost every politician from South Carolina is endorsing me. How do you do that when she was the governor? And it was just reported that Nikki Haley, state director in New Hampshire. This is a very bad one. Listen carefully. Tyler Clark. Did anyone ever hear of him? He was a lobbyist for the 1630 Fund, which is managed by Arabella Advisors, which is the largest Democrat dark money network in the country and considered public enemy number one. That's who's managing her campaign. Does that tell you something, perhaps? The 1630 Fund and the larger Arabella Fund, you know who that is? It's a network, and they're giving her a lot of money because they want her to win because they don't want to run. Hey, look, they lost in 2016, and they lost even bigger in 2020, okay? And they don't want to do it again. They want to run against Nikki. And you've seen the polls. We're the only one that beats Biden. Because, not because Biden's good, because he's terrible. But they have, they have an automatic 38%. Automatic. I don't want to go what group because I actually think we're going to get a lot of union votes. Okay, that's good. But they have groups of people that automatically. So if you're this podium, you get 38 percent. And he's polling right now at 34. That's very hard to do. You can't as, as it, now we have to do it like in 2016. We ran the entire East Coast. We ran the Midwest, we ran everything, and we won. That was a surprise. They said, we'll never let that happen again. They don't want to let that happen again. And they'll cheat, and they'll do whatever they have to do. 
And the biggest thing we have to do, we cannot let them cheat on election period. We used to call it election day. It should be back to election day, but we have to say election period. They spent more than $400 million in 2020 trying to defeat me and to elect crooked Joe Biden with all those lockboxes, you know, with all those tapes watching the lockboxes and then the judges don't want to do anything about it. It's terrible. Going to the legislatures, getting rejected and then going back and doing whatever the hell they wanted. They got rejected by the legislatures then they went in and did whatever they wanted to do. It's terrible. Then you had the laptop from hell, right? Where the 51 intelligence agents said, oh no, it was from Russia. They knew it was from Hunter. It was from Hunter. In other words, Nikki Haley is using radical Democrat money to fund the radical Democrat campaign operation that she's running in order to try and do things. You notice I haven't even mentioned the name of Ron DeSanctimonious yet because I think he's gone. <laughs> You didn't say that. No, he does not wear high heels, okay? He does not wear high heels. All right, maybe he does. Guy screams out he's got a new pair of high heels. You can't do that. It's not polite. Don't do that. I'll have to admonish you. But they want to turn liberal voters into... Republicans for about uh, two minutes while they vote and then go back to being liberal voters in the Democrat Party. It's terrible. It's a terrible thing. Hey, look, I love this state. You know, you really helped me a lot. 2016, we came in here. We blew this state open, you know, and blew the election open more than anything. And I came in and we uh, we did fantastically here. We've done great here. But you can't let that happen. You can't have the Democrats. You just got to get rid of the system. It would take, if you're governor, it would take about two minutes. You just can't have a system where Democrats, for, think of it, Democrats are allowed to vote in the Republican primary. That's the only thing I can't determine. How many are there? We know there are at least 4,000, because before October 7th, they were allowed to openly come in and vote. So we know they have that. But how many are there? So just make sure, don't listen to polls. Get out and vote. We need a big, big win against these terrible people. I spent so much time last week saying that in Iowa. I said, you know, we had great polls. We were up like 40. And they, I said, don't believe the polls. Pretend you're one down because we don't need any surprises. And I said, Alice, you got to get out of bed now, Alice. We're going to vote. But darling, I don't feel good. It doesn't make any difference, Alice. You got to get the hell out of bed. We're going to vote because we don't want to take any chances. And we need big margins because we have to send real unity as a message. Because, you know, with real unity, they won't be able to cheat. It won't matter. The radical left Democrats are supporting Nikki Haley for one reason, because they know she's very easy to beat. She's going to be very easy to beat. She's them. That's why I'm so proud to be joined today by an incredible group of leaders from Nikki's home state of South Carolina, where we'll be in about three weeks. We'll be there in three weeks. And I saw a poll, Henry, the governor, what a great governor. I saw a poll, and by the way, he actually really did keep his state open. He's one of the few, he really did, because I said to the governors, you have to do what you want to do. That's one of the few people, and there were a few, they were all Republicans, but he really kept his state open. But they understand that I am the only candidate in this race who's going to save America, and we're going to get rid of this Biden disaster right away. So, it is my honor to call on stage from South Carolina, Governor Henry McMaster, one of the best governors in the country. Come on up, Henry. We'll be there in three weeks. So we're going to be there in three weeks. So you know what I'm doing? I'm kissing S. I'm kissing S. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett. She's fantastic. Pamela. <laughs> Attorney General Alan Wilson. Just won a very big case, by the way. Big case, Alan. <laughs> South Carolina House Speaker Merle Smith. <laughs> I love that name. South Carolina Treasurer, Curtis Loftus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Curtis. Congressman Joe Wilson. Do you remember Joe Wilson? 
Do you remember? You're lying, he said. You're lying. Because that's a believer. He's great. That made him very popular, actually. That told, it caused a little turmoil, but it made him very popular. He's great. Congressman William, William Timmons. William, thank you. And a friend of mine, an incredible political figure. He's really taken politics by storm, Congressman. Russell Fly, Fry. Hey, Russell, I'm going to ask you, if you would, wherever the hell you are, to say a couple of words and then a couple of others. And we're going to get this done real quick, but we have to be really good to South Carolina because we have to win big. We're only up in the last poll by 60 points. 6 <laughs> That's pretty good. She was the governor, and we're up by 60. So, Russell, why don't you start? Go ahead. Thank you, Russell. Hello, New Hampshire. How are we doing? Man. Joe Biden heard that from his basement in Delaware, I think. That was so loud. <laughs> it is an honor to be here in New Hampshire. I got to tell you, the first time that I ever stood on stage with President Trump was two years ago in South Carolina. It was 20 degrees. That was pretty cold. Not like New Hampshire cold, but cold. And what was amazing to me is we stood there and thousands of people, much like today, came out to support Donald Trump again for President of the United States. Are y'all ready for Donald Trump? <laughs> So my name is Russell Fry, congressman from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Who's ever been to Myrtle Beach? Who wants to go to Myrtle Beach right now? All right. So I came all the way to New Hampshire because I have one question, actually two. Is this Nikki Haley country? Or is this Donald Trump country? That right there is the power of the America First movement, and there are so many South Carolinians here. We could be in our home state, it's a little bit warmer right now, but we chose to come up to, to New Hampshire for a reason. There's a reason why President Trump in South Carolina, in the governor's, Governor Haley's former state, well, she has 14 endorsements compared to Donald Trump's 100. So, do we want somebody who's controlled by the big donors and the Wall Street special interests? Or do we want someone who fights every single day for hardworking Americans? Do we want somebody who flip-flops on every position? Or do we want somebody like Donald Trump who keeps his word? And this is interesting because we've lived it in South Carolina, but do we want somebody who caves to the Chinese Communist Party, gives them land and calls them a friend? Or do we want somebody like Donald Trump who they fear? And lastly, do we want somebody who's soft on immigration? Or do we want somebody who can secure the border, build the wall, and bring back our rule of law? Well, Mr. President, I think the choice is pretty clear with this crowd. They want Donald Trump back in the White House. So you got a, you got a task ahead of you. Tuesday's a big day. And like the president just said, if somebody's sick, if, if, if it's too cold, look, Iowa just voted in record numbers despite three feet of snow or whatever it was. I, you know, we get, a, we get a dusting in South Carolina and the whole state shuts down. <laughs> so it is so important to get out there and vote because the time, it is time for us to fight for this man like he has fought for us. Are y'all ready for that challenge? We need a leader who can turn this country around. President Trump has done it once, and I know that he can do it again. So on Tuesday, let's take that next step. 
The next step to retire the mumbling, bumbling, mentally deluded occupant of the White House out and put this man back in as the 47th President of the United States. Way to go, New Hampshire! Are we coming out for Trump on Tuesday or what? Are we going to take 10, 15 people to the voting polls with us? Are we going to do that? We need to do that because we have an open border. I'm here today not just because I'm the Lieutenant Governor of South Carolina, because I have believed in President Trump since 2015. President Trump made our country safer and everybody prospered. Now our borders are open. We need to bring him back. Do we need to bring him back? Bring him back. If we want our borders closed, we need to do what? Bring him back. If we want to become energy independent again, what are we going to do? If we want to make sure that we take care of our veterans, our seniors, and our law enforcement, what are we going to do? You know, everybody likes to talk about Donald Trump's policies and they want to take credit for him. But when this man was born, God broke the mold. And you cannot have President Trump policies without President Trump. Thank you so much, New Hampshire. Let's close this on Tuesday. Hello, New Hampshire. I love your motto, live free or die. Do we feel like we've been living free for the last four years? Well, there's a way we can fix that. And that is to elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. My name is Merle Smith. I'm the Speaker of the South Carolina House. I served with Nikki Haley in the General Assembly. I held a fundraiser for her when she ran for governor at my home. But I can tell you right now, I, as as well as a majority of my colleagues and the leadership of the South Carolina House of Representatives and members, are supporting Donald Trump. And let me tell you why. Because this man created one of the most robust economies in our lifetime four years ago. He is someone that does not need on-the-job training. He is someone that knows how to make this uh, country great again. And, And so I would ask you for one thing. You are in a unique position. You are in a sacred position right now because Tuesday... You can come out and vote and have Donald Trump win this primary overwhelming and send a message to the Republican Party in this state. And I tell you this, if you do that and you win by a big margin here, we'll finish the job in South Carolina. So thank you. God bless you. Vote Donald Trump. All right, y'all. I'm the last one of us that's going to speak. I'll be very brief. Y'all know what the pure plural of y'all is? All y'all. Well, I want to tell all y'all why we all are here. I don't know if you noticed, but all the statewide elected officials in South Carolina, we call them constitutional officers, are for Trump. Except one, she's a rookie and she'll figure it out before long. Our two U.S. Senators and the vast majority of the people of South Carolina want Donald Trump. So so that's why we are here. We are here for one reason. We're here for one reason. You've heard this, those great philosophers, the Spice Girls. Tell us what you want, what you really, really want. Well, that's what we're here to do, to tell you what we in South Carolina want, what we really, really want. And there he is. Right there. I got more. He's short. 
All right, I, I got four short reasons, four short reasons. We want Donald Trump. Why? To protect our borders, return the illegals, and build a wall. That's reason number one. Reason number two, get the woke out of our military and... Get the woke out of our military and put the fight back in. Reason number three or four, put common sense conservatives, judges in the courts to restore the rule of law and the Constitution. And finally, to tell our enemies abroad that America is standing back up and it's time for them to sit back down. New Hampshire is for Trump. South Carolina is too. We'll see you at the finish line. Well, thank you very much, South Carolina Governor. Thank you very much. Very popular group of people, I'll tell you. They've done a fantastic job. And uh, again, we're going to be there in three weeks. That's why I did that. Don't tell them, but that's why I did that. It's a big, a big, very political state. They have a lot to say about things, and uh, we love them. And we have most, almost everybody supporting us there, which is quite a tribute when you have somebody running who is the governor. To the people of New Hampshire, all you need to know about Nikki Haley is that every globalist, liberal, a Biden supporter, and never Trumper is on her side. And virtually every single leader, that's not too many people, by the way, in her home state of South Carolina is on our side. We have almost everybody. And I can say that for Texas. I can say that for Michigan. We just had a great poll today for Michigan. We're up 11 points. It's a hard. The auto workers. They don't want to see cars being built in China. It's very simple. In Texas, we're up by 18 points. Can you believe this? I don't mean on her. I mean on Biden, I'm talking about. Same thing with Michigan. No, we're up almost everywhere, all over the, all over the country. We're way up on Biden. And we're going to keep it that way because I actually think it's going to get worse. I think we've never had more danger in our country than we have right now. We have a serious danger of going into a World War III, and we think the election is going to be close. Uh, it's 10 months, a little more than 10 months. Uh, that's a long time. These guys can screw things up very, very rapidly. And you see it starting already. You see it starting. This conflict all over the world. Remember. Israel would have never happened. Ukraine would have never happened. You wouldn't have had inflation. China wouldn't be talking about Taiwan. But here are just a few of the toxic positions that make Nikki and Ron de Sanctimoni is completely unelectable. Haley said she wants to raise the Social Security retirement age to match life expectancy, which means that she wants it to go up to about 77. Is everybody happy with that? It's not going to happen with us. Ten years before you collect one penny of benefits, you've worked your entire life. Can't do that to people. DeSanct has voted three times to raise the retirement age very substantially on Social Security. He voted when he was a congressman, when he was at about three until I endorsed him. And then he won because I endorsed him. And then he said, yeah, I'll run against him. Why not? You know, four years later, I said, that's nice. So we hit him hard. They said, don't hit him so hard, sir. He's a Republican. I said, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Nikki also supported Rhino Paul Ryan's 2011 plan to destroy Medicare. The same plan that led to Democrat ads, the most vicious ads, showing Republicans wheeling granny off the cliff. Do you remember that one? That was not good politics. They lost that election by a lot. Incredibly, Nikki is defending her planned cuts for Social Security, and she's out there really defending. No, no, we want to cut. We want to cut. Now, you can't do it. You know, we have a really wealthy nation. We have more liquid gold under our feet. We're going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to make so much money. We don't have to play with things like they're talking about. Like the Sanctus, Nikki Haley supports a 23% national sales tax. Think about that. Think. This is death. 
This is death for a candidate. The world doesn't know that. I thought I'd let you know before the election. Perhaps worst of all, Nikki Haley is backed by the deep state and the military industrial complex because they know she is a globalist and really a globalist fool who they can easily manipulate into sending hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine. Think of this. We, we have sent over $200 billion to Ukraine and Europe, the European, our European friends, when you combine them, you combine them, it's about the same size the economy as the United States. They've spent barely 20 billion, so we're at 200 billion. I think they should make up the difference. Don't you think they should at least equalize? I did that with NATO. We were paying and they weren't. We're defending them and we're paying the bills. And I said, nope, unless you, they asked me, does this mean that if Russia attacks us, you will not defend us? I said, are you paid up? Well, let's say we're not, then I'm not defending you. And the money came pouring in. The money came pouring in. So our borders remain wide open. You know, we had the safest, best borders in history three years ago. Now we have the worst borders anywhere in the world. I don't believe there's ever been borders like this. In short, if you want a losing candidate who puts America last, vote for either one of them, Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis. You know, the other day, I think it was NBC, their interview, a straight interview, but they can't do a straight. NBC is one of the worst, but they can't. But it was sort of straight. And they said, ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to have this opportunity to talk to Governor Ron DeSantis. And he said, no, 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 it's DeSantis. That's good branding. When you can get it so they can't even get his name right. <laughs> and that's just the abbreviation of DeSanctimonious, right? But if you want a president, and he's, I think he's going to be out pretty quick based on what I'm hearing. Based on what I'm looking at, you don't have to hear it. You have to look at things go polls. And she's going to be out pretty quick, too. But if you want a person that puts America first, there's only one person that you can vote for, and that's Donald J. Trump. And you saw that for four years. We're the greatest economy in the history of our country. On day one of my new administration, I will seal the border and I will shut down the invasion of millions of people that are coming through into our country. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in U.S. history. We built 561 miles, far more than I said we were going to be able to build. And this is after fighting Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, and the Democrats. Sometimes you wonder who was worse. You know what I did? I took it out of the military. I said, listen, this is an invasion. I'm taking it out of the military because with Congress, it's like, unless you're, unless you're a Democrat, they suck a lot of money out of Republicans that vote wrong. We got to be very, very careful with that. Very, very careful. But I took it right out of the military. We built it and we built like nobody's ever. You know the wall the way it looks, right? That's exactly what they wanted. Border Patrol. Brandon Judd, phenomenal person. You take a look at, does anyone ever hear, do you ever hear of Tom Holman? Is he central casting? He said, President Trump, both of them, everybody said it, the greatest president in history for the border. We had that thing so good. All Biden had to do is stay on the beach, just stay on the beach. Just, but he broke it all up. But we built the border wall. We got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. Thank you very much, Mexico. I love the president. He's a great guy. But he wasn't exactly happy about that. He was not happy about that. Under Biden, the USA has been turned into a dumping ground for the entire world. Now, you know, I, I see signs flashing back there. And it sort of depends if you want it. Do you? It's a Saturday night. Do you want this to be the long version or the short version? Do you want to hear the snake? Because it's very ample. Do you want to hear? All right. Sadly, this is emblematic of what's going on in our country at the border. This was an old song that I revised a lot for purposes of saving our country, frankly. And it has to do with the border. Think of it as the border. Think of it as the people that we're letting in because they're coming in from jails and prisons. They're coming in from mental institutions, insane asylums. They're emptying out into the United States. We're like a dumping ground. Terrorists are coming into our country. 
And I think this is very emblematic of what's happening. Sad. Sad. People love it, but it's sad. But it gives you what is going on. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried. I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had just survived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Right? That's what's happening on our border. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. We're taking in people that shouldn't be in our country. This is a problem, and we will, we will be doing a lot of things. But isn't it, isn't it true? We're bringing them in from mental institutions, prisons, Terrorists are pouring into our country. You know, in 2019, I saw on one of the shows, this was true news, in 2019, they had no terrorists reported at all coming in because we had an anti-terror clause, and it was actually upheld in the United States Supreme Court. We have three great new justices, and we have some very good justices on the court. I hope the Republican justices are willing to uh, do things right. You know, a Democrat put in, let's say, by Obama or Biden, they're down and dirty. They'll just say, nope, nope, I'm voting the way that guy wants. A Republican, they want to show that they can't be bought, that the fact that you put them there and made their lives, took them from some place where they were doing quite well. But you know what? They want to go out of their way to be politically correct. This country has to do things right. They cannot worry about political correctness anymore. They can't do it. They have to do things right. So you have some votes coming up. The Colorado decision where, as you know, although I would say almost unanimous, even radical left crazy Democrats, you say you can't take the vote away from the people. And in this case, we're leading everywhere. We're leading with Republicans. We're leading with Democrats. We're beating Biden by a lot. And if Biden gets in, you know, they want to substantially expand the Supreme Court, which would be a terrible thing. But you have to understand, we have to really, we have to get down to business or we're not going to have a country left. We need two things in our country, so important. We need two things. We need strong borders and we need free and fair and honest elections. The other vote they're taking is going to be on immunity for the president. Now, this isn't just me. This is all president. They have to be given immunity. Otherwise, they're going to be unable to act. Anything they do, if it goes wrong, even if it goes right, the opposing party, and you see that now, where you have these people, they're crazy. They're absolute. The opposing party will indict them for anything they do. So a president has to be given immunity. And this has nothing to do with me. This has to do with every single president. As an example, when Biden gets out, I mean, has that guy got a list you could go after? But you have to give a president immunity. Otherwise, take a look at Harry Truman. He wouldn't have done 
If you think Hiroshima, not exactly a nice act, but it did end the Second World War, probably. Right? Nagasaki, he wouldn't be doing that. He said, I don't want to do that because my, my opponents will indict me. You have to give a president full and total immunity. And, you know, I liken it to a little bit uh, police. You have to give them back their authority and their power because our country is crime rich. And when you do that, you're going to have a rogue cop. You're going to have a bad apple somewhere along the line. Very, very few, surprisingly few, but you're going to have some. And what they're doing is they're trying to protect so much against that that crime is rampant all over the place. And, you know, the police are incredible and the firemen and everyone else, they're, but they're incredible. These are incredible people and they want to do their job and they're not allowed to do it. Just like the Border Patrol wants to do their job. They're not allowed. They're under orders. You'll lose your house. You'll lose your everything you have. You'll lose your family, your wife, family, husband, family. You're going to lose everything if you do it, if you act. When they see people walking out of the stores carrying televisions, don't do it. Don't touch them. Don't do anything. We have to go back to being a country of law and order. Have to do it. And you will have very seldom, but you will have the rogue. We call it the rogue cop, the bad apple. And perhaps you'll have that also with president. But there's nothing you can do about that. You're going to have to give the president, you're going to have to allow a president, any president, to have immunity so that that president can act and do what he feels and what his group of advisors feel is the absolute right thing. Otherwise, you're going to have presidents that are totally impotent. And we've had enough of them already. We've had enough of them already. So having immunity is so important. And I hope the Supreme Court has the courage to do that, because otherwise you're just not going to be in a very strong position very long. It'll totally change our country, in my opinion. That's how bad it would be. Upon taking office, I will terminate every open border policy that Biden and the Biden administration put on and begin the largest deportation operation in American history. To stop the deadly drugs that are poisoning and pouring into our country, poisoning our people, I will deploy the U.S. Navy. We are going to impose, and we had this, you know, we were at a 38-year low for drugs coming in, too, not just people coming in for drugs. And now we're nine times more. Drugs are just pouring in. We fought that hard. We spent millions of dollars on equipment that could detect. You know what the best detection, though, is? A certain type of German Shepherd. You can spend millions of dollars on drug detecting equipment, and it's not as good as a great certain type of German Shepherd, like they're flawless. Can you imagine dogs? We all love dogs, right? It's a great thing. But the Navy's going to impose a full fentanyl blockade on the waters of our region because it comes from every different way. And I had a deal with President Xi of China. And when the election turned out the way it turned out, we got more votes than any sitting president in history. And we lost by a whisker. Bullshit. OK, bullshit. You know, we got more votes. We got more votes, Henry, than any president in the history of our country. Any president. And uh, bad things happen. But President Xi and I had an agreement. He was going to give the maximum penalty to anybody making fentanyl in China and sending it over here. That means the death penalty, because they have the death penalty. That's why they don't have any drug problem. In China, they have the death penalty. Singapore, other places. Where you have the death penalty, you have no drug problem. It's a very simple thing. So I don't know that our country is ready for it. But each drug dealer kills, on average, 500 people during his or her lifetime. And I know what it is because I have so many friends. And even if you lose somebody without that, just lose somebody. We had it this last week. I lost my mother-in-law and uh, she passed away, peacefully passed away. It's a very hard thing to take. But think of what happens when you lose a child or anybody to fentanyl. It's a horrible thing. And we had it just about set. And when uh, that was going to go into existence, and then when these guys came, they didn't care about that. They didn't know about it. They didn't want to bother with it. That would have been one of the most important things we did. I'll get it done again. President Xi will do it again. I guarantee you that. The drug cartels are waging war on America, and we will destroy those cartels. We have to destroy. You know, it's war. 
I believe we're losing 300,000, not, you know, they say 91,000, that's not 91,000, 300,000 people a year, I believe, are lost to drugs pouring into our country. That's worse than a war, okay? That's worse than a war. So we have a war going on. And I will use Title 42, which I had. In fact, the judge in that case was fantastic. He said to the, they wanted to terminate it early. The judge wouldn't let him do it. He said, no, wait a minute. Do you know what's going to happen to our country if we do that? Title 42. And he said, no, but it expires. You can wait. But if you don't extend it, it would be terrible. But I'm not going to give you the right to terminate it. He was fantastic, actually. He understood. But Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families and their home countries immediately. Nikki Haley will never secure the border or stop the fentanyl that is killing thousands and thousands of New Hampshire citizens. You know, I took tours with your police force and your fire force. And a big part of what they do in New Hampshire, I don't know what it is with New Hampshire, but you probably have per capita the worst drug situation in the entire country. Why don't you try getting a new governor that would help, okay? But you have the worst, I believe it's the worst, per capita, I believe it's the worst, uh, and it's not even close. But I went around with the firemen, the job they do, the policemen, the job of keeping people alive. But sometimes they'll have to do it four or five times with the same person, and oftentimes that person doesn't make it eventually. Nikki Haley opposed my border wall very strongly. She condemned my strong border policies, and they really worked. They really worked. I mean, I put in policies. I didn't want people coming in from countries that hate us, that want to blow up our shopping centers and kill our people. And so we didn't let them come in, and we had a... You know, I wanted to talk about it so badly during that four-year period. Two and a half, three years went up. I said, I want to talk, but I don't want to mention it because if I mention it the next day, they'll have a problem and they'll say, see? But we went, for, now I can talk about it with great pride. We went four years without any terrorist problem because we kept them out. We kept them out. And remember, Iran was broke. Under the Trump administration, Iran was broke. I said to China, if you buy one barrel of oil from Iran, you're not going to do any business in the U.S., and we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on everything you have. They said, like we said, uh, we're not going to buy any oil. But I did that with many countries, and they were, ab they were absolutely broke. If you remember back, you go back three and a half years ago, you will see that uh, there were reports, actually, even from the fake news, that Hamas, Hezbollah, they didn't have any money because Iran had no money to give them. They wanted to survive. And I, I didn't want to be bad to, I just didn't want Iran to have a nuclear weapon. I said, you know, we're going to make a great deal. Everybody's going to be happy. You're going to be rich as hell again. Everything's going to be great. But you cannot have a nuclear weapon. Now they're 31 days away from having a nuclear weapon. These numbskulls have done nothing. They had, it, it would have been such an easy deal. They wanted to make a deal. And then because of the results of the election, they said, let's wait it out. Nobody ever contacted them. They're going to have a nuclear weapon in 31 days, the, the likes of which the power of nuclear weaponry is uh, not describable. Actually, it's not describable. And that's where we are right now. This country has regressed to a point that it's so embarrassing to even talk about when you look at what's happened. Just three years, a little more than three years. Uh, what's happened to our country is so sad to see. Nikki stabbed the Republican Party in the back by siding with Barack Hussein Obama against the Trump travel ban, which kept us safe. That travel ban was a, it was a gift from God. It kept us safe as a country. We didn't have the problems that other countries had. Biden and his thugs are desperate to stop us because they know that we are the only ones who can stop them. We're the only ones that can stop them. You know, this is the greatest movement in the history of the United States. There's never been a movement like this. Never been a movement like this. Never. In an interview yesterday, a very sad interview, actually, Attorney General Merrick Garland, head of Crooked Joe Biden's Department of Injustice, actually stated that he wanted to speed up the so-called election integrity witch hunt against President Trump. And I say, if he wanted to do that, why didn't they file the lawsuit three years earlier? Because they wanted to have it right smack in the middle of the election. You know when it comes to? They want to start the trial. And I think it's going to be delayed very substantially because of all the things you see happening. 
including what's happening in Georgia with the horrible case of Fanny Willis. It's, it's actually pronounced Fanny. It's F-A-N-I, but you pronounce it Fanny, a little French accent there. Fanny. But that's a terrible thing. But so Merritt Garland, I didn't think he'd be like this because I understood it, you know, looked at him. He, to me, he was a very respected uh, justice, judge, very respected for a long time. I never thought this would happen with him. He was liberal, but he was a respected guy. And I never thought this would happen, but he wants to speed it up. But I say they want to speed it up. They could have started it three years ago, three years ago. This would have been over two years and uh, now they want to speed it up. You know why they want to speed it up? Because I'm leading in the election. This is election interference at a level that nobody has ever seen before. It's because they know that I did nothing wrong and they want to get going. And it's, by the way, uh, and by the way, what the hell ever happened to the Biden boxes deal? What's with Biden boxes? Where did that ever go? They kept saying, Trump, they raided Mar-a-Lago. You remember, they raided my home. How would you like to have your home raided? Nice home. They raided my home. Whatever happened? Remember, he kept classified documents under the wheels of his Corvette. He loves that Corvette. In an open garage with no security. Whatever happened? Let's check that. Whatever happened to Biden, the Biden box? He had massive numbers. He, he was taking stuff when he was a senator, which that you're not allowed to do. I was protected by the Presidential Records Act, by the way. But whatever happened to that boxes deal with, with Joe Biden? And why isn't Garland going after the ones who rigged the 2020 election? Why is he always going after the ones who are complaining about the rigging? They only go after the ones complaining. Now, we have to have, we have, to have honest elections in all these cases. Biden and Garland were weaponizing law enforcement for really high-level election interference. That's what they're doing now. He's got nothing he can run on. He always says, Donald Trump is a threat. <laughs> He's a threat to democracy. That's right. That's right. MAGA. MAGA. We've got to stop MAGA. What does MAGA mean, Joe? Uh, make America great again. We've got to stop Make America great again. Think of it. We've got to stop Make America great again. But I don't do too much imitation of him because every time I do it, every single time, they have it on television, like uh, fake NBC, fake CBS, <laughs> fake ABC, ABC. Not to mention CNN, MSDNC, and Fox. But every time I do it, if I imitate him, they show me, Donald Trump spoke poorly last night. He could hardly say a word. <laughs> so it's very dangerous. You know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I, I hardly do it anymore. Maybe I'll do it for New Hampshire. I'm desperate to get, I, I'm desperate to get your vote. I'm desperate to get your vote. Maybe I'll do it. But I don't do it because what they do is if I'm sarcastic or like I, a lot of times I'll say, and President Obama is doing a lousy job, meaning that Obama is running the show. They'll say, Donald Trump doesn't know who our president is. <laughs> no, no. Because cognitively, you know, I don't know if you saw, but a few months ago, I took a cognitive test my doctor gave me. I said, give me a cognitive test just so we can, you know, because you know what the standards were. And I aced it. I also took one when I was in. But I also took one when I was in the White House. No, I'll let you know when I go bad. I really think I'll be able to tell you because someday we go bad. But, you know, I've had and they always say like like Haley, she talks about, yeah, we don't need 80 year old. Well, I don't mind being 80, but I'm 77. That's a big difference. <laughs> big difference. But I have people. I have one friend who became a very rich man, became a billionaire. His whole life, he didn't do well. He was in a certain business, didn't do well. He turned 80. He made a billion dollars between the age of 80 and 90. He made all his money from 80 to 90. They always like to mention age. It's not age. Different people, different strokes, right? But what it is is, think of that, made all of his money. I know people that are 90. I know one person, 94 years old, a phenomenal. His mind is as sharp as it's ever been. I feel my mind is stronger now than it was 25 years ago. Is that possible? I really do. 
Now, Biden can't say that. Look, you know he can't say that. You know he can't say that. You know there's something going on. But when I imitated, so a few weeks ago, I imitated, because you, as you know, he can never find the stairs. You know how many stairs? One, two. We have two on the side. Three, four, and there's one back here, and then there's an emergency. You got like six or seven. This is not a big platform. So I imitated it, and everybody had a great time. You know the way he finishes the speech? The speeches usually last about two minutes, yeah? That's right. Thank you. Two or three minutes. They're not long. This is not Winston Churchill. He used to speak for a, never have so few, done so much for so many. You know, that was about the Spitfire. He was a slightly good speaker. But this isn't Winston Churchill. But they last very, very short periods of time because the energy runs low. You know, it's got a something going on there. The key with him is to get him going for a long period of time. Let's see how it looks. But when he leaves, he always, do you ever notice he always points? He goes, thank you. He always says, like the Heisman Trophy. And then, but he leaves. And so I, I, they had a wall. We'll pretend that's a wall back there, but they had a wall. I don't think there's a stair in the back, so he would find that area instead of the, But you know what? So there's a wall. And I, I imitated him going to the wall. And everybody cracked up. We were all having a good time. And the fake news said, Donald Trump was embarrassed tonight. He couldn't find his way off the stage. Can you believe? No, no. They are the most dishonest people. You know the thing, you know the thing where they, we talked about a dictator. Donald Trump wants to be a dictator. So Sean Hannity, who's a fantastic guy, by the way. Sean Hannity, I did a town hall with him two weeks ago. And he said, all right, let's put this to rest. He thought he was doing me a favor. And I wanted to be cute. I always got to be cute. He said, let's put, you don't want to be a dictator or anything, do you? I said, Sean, I only want to be a dictator for one day. And I'm going to be a dictator, Sean, for one day. And I'm going to close up the border and I'm going to drill, baby drill. And after that, I'm not going to become a dictator. Right? So here's what the fake news does. It's so horrible. So I said, I want to be a dictator for one day. And then if you go on just like 10 seconds, it says the two things, right? We're going to have a great border. We're going to drill, baby, drill. Those two things. We're going to have energy. It's going to be, we're going to make so much money. We're not going to have to worry about your social security. So I said those two things. I said, I'm going to be a dictator. And they cut it. So all over television said, Donald Trump wants to be a dictator. Listen to it. I'm going to be a dictator, cut. <laughs> now that's really, and it said, for one day, and I did, I did also finish and said, and then after that, I'm not going to be a dictator ever again. So we were having fun, and they've got me, they've got me saying I want to be a dictator. These are sick people, I'm telling you. We have to straighten out our free press. But Joe Biden... Joe Biden, Joe Biden is a threat to democracy for a number of reasons. Take a look at what he's doing with weaponization. What he's doing with the weaponization that we just discussed is terrible. But he's a threat for another reason, very big. He's grossly incompetent. That's the biggest threat that we have to democracy. We're going to end up in World War III with this guy running things. And you know, it's interesting. Until I got indicted, I never talked this way about him. I, you probably know. Until I got, who is this? Is he a friend? You can get him out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go ahead, you can throw him out.
Well, now we know that politics is getting serious. So now we know we're getting serious now. He's just a disturbed person. Remember that used to happen all the time. People used to call for it. Where is that? We want it back. But no, probably we're we're really now into political season and that is happening. It's happening. And the people in this room know what any probably knows too. And a lot of those guys, by the way, are paid by Soros and these people. You know that. They're troublemakers. A lot of those people are paid. They go outside. In fact, they're MAGA people, but they can't help it. They say, look, you gave me so I said, do what you're doing. This is only happening, all of this, because all of the weaponization, because we're leading so much in the polls, especially if you look, we're leading her by a lot. Ron is probably finished. He's probably finished, sad. May he rest in peace. In the new Redfield Wilton poll, just came out a little while ago, it's Trump, 72%, Haley, 9%, and DeSanctimonious, 9%. But that's why you have to get out and vote, though. We have to keep those margins in Nevada. We're going to be there next week. You know what we're going to get in Nevada? 100% of the vote. 100 You know why? They looked at the polls and they decided we're not going to play there. So next week is Nevada, a great state. And uh, DeSanctimony has just announced he's pulling out of Nevada. In South Carolina, you just saw all of the leaders, just about everybody. We have almost everybody, respected pulse, a very respected guy. Tony Fabrizio, have you ever heard of him? He's Italian by persuasion. I think, but you know, he's a great pollster. John McLaughlin, great pollster. He has some great pulses. Tony Fabrizio has it here, 64, think of it. Trump at 64%, Haley at 25%, Ron DeSantis. What the hell happened to him? 8%. We're leading in New Hampshire, but take nothing for granted because polls only matter if you get out and vote. You have to get out and vote. The polls could be so destructive. You know, I used to get polls like in Wisconsin. They said Trump is down 19 points. Washington Post, ABC, Washington Post, ABC, fake news, Washington Post. And they used to go... And they had me down actually 18 points. Trump is down eight. I said, it can't be. Wisconsin's a great state. I just gave a speech. We had 38,000 people. There's no way I'm down 18 points. And our polls said we were doing well there. I ended up winning that state. And I went to John McLaughlin, the great pollster. I said, how can they say I'm down 18? And I end up winning in the election, winning it. I said, why don't they say five or four or three? He said, because at three or four or five, you go out and the people say, I'm going to go and vote. At 19 or 18 or 17, they say, darling, let's stay home. And who can blame them? They don't want to go out and vote. But when you're down like anything below five, and he taught me this, I didn't realize it. So they'd rather ruin their reputation. They'd be down 18 points, something like that. So they'd rather ruin their reputation for the next cycle then say he's down 2% or he's up 1% or whatever it is. I ended up winning. But I said to him, what does that mean? He said, you would have won by much more because many people, when they saw 18%, they stayed home. The pollsters are just as dishonest as these people back here, which is saying a lot. We're also dominating crooked Joe Biden in the general election. We're up eight points over Biden in the new Rasmussen poll that just came out. While Haley, Nikki Haley is getting clobbered in that poll. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. Because I mean, it's, it's so true, it's so true. These people, what they do, it's, it's really backfired on them, I guess. Because I'm being indicted for you, and never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I will never let that happen. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in the way. I am in the way. I always will be. We're delighted to be joined tonight by Hillsborough County Attorney John Coughlin, Belknap County Sheriff Bill Wright, 
RNC National Committeeman Bill O'Brien. Congressman, he's a very low-key individual. Congressman Matt Gates. Hello, Congressman. Where's Matt Gates? Hello, Matt. I didn't know you were going to be here, Matt. Wow. Hi, Matt. And a man who is the greatest mayor in the history of New York City and with great courage, Rudy Giuliani. He's a popular guy. I tell you, he was the greatest mayor, not even close. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden and his band of radical left lunatics, I believe we are going to have four of the greatest years in the history of our country. We had the four. We had we had the greatest economy in history. Think of all the things we did. Rebuilt the military, biggest tax cuts ever, biggest regulation cuts ever. The next Trump economic boom will begin on November 5th, 2024. That's what's going to happen. And we're going to bring America together through unprecedented success. You know, when we were just prior to COVID coming in and we did a great job, didn't get, we got credit for economy, we got credit for military, we got credit for foreign policy, never got the credit that we deserve. We had this horrible scourge coming into our country all over the world, all over the world, people dying all over the world. We never got the credit. We did a great job with the ventilators and all of the things we did, but we never got it. And it's uh, just incredible. But four incredible years under my leadership, we built the single greatest economy, think of it, in the history of the world. There's, our country has never been so successful, especially in that period, that long period of time before the China virus came to our shores. With record low unemployment rates for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, veterans, young people, old people, people with diplomas, people without diplomas, people that went to MIT, like my uncle who was there for 40 years as a professor, the longest serving professor. Rudy, did you know that my uncle was at MIT, Dr. John Trump, for 40 years? He's the longest serving uh, professor in the history of him. He had three degrees. One wasn't good enough for him, but he was great. He was great. My father's brother. Think of it. We had gas prices at $1.87 a gallon, and there was no inflation. We had no inflation. Energy caused inflation. Energy caused inflation. Together, we ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and we replaced it with the brand new USMCA, the best trade deal ever made. And, you know, they're trying to renegotiate that now. Canada and Mexico, they want to renegotiate because it's a lousy deal for them. I could have told them that. I did that one myself. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars, pouring right into our treasury when no other president in all of these years had ever gotten 10 cents, not, not 10 cents came into our country from China. And I took out of those hundreds of billions, I took $28 billion out, I gave it to the farmers and to New England lobstermen who are under siege by Biden. Lobstermen and fishermen. Do we have any lobstermen and fishermen here? Lobstermen and fishermen, yeah, that's interesting. And I will fight for the fishermen like never before with four more years as president of the United States. You know, they want to put fees on the fishermen every day. They want $700. I don't know anything about the industry other than I protect the industry. But $700 is a lot of money for a fisherman to go out fishing. What happens if you don't catch any fish? That happens. As soon as I get back in the White House, I will quickly end Joe Biden's inflation catastrophe. We will terminate the Green News scam, and we will drill, baby, drill. We will drill, baby, drill. Right? We'll quickly cut New Hampshire energy prices in half. You have the highest energy prices in the entire world. Think of it. I just got finished saying you have the worst drug problem in the whole country per capita, by far. But you also have the highest energy. Those are two bad statistics. Those are two bad statistics, Sununu. Those are two very bad, and it shouldn't be that way. You have the highest energy prices in the entire country by a lot. 
I will cut them in half within my first year in office because we have plenty of energy. It's right there. On day one, I will end crooked Joe Biden's insane electric vehicle mandate. This week, 17 retired military officials stated that Biden's electric vehicle lunacy is a threat to national security. Is And by the way, they don't work well in cold weather. And they don't go far. That's true. They don't go far. But it's certainly not uh, great for your climb. Your climb, they call it climate. While well, Biden is pushing the largest tax hike in American history, I will make the Trump tax cuts, the biggest tax cuts ever, bigger than Reagan. I will make them permanent. We're going to make them permanent. You know, they expire in a year. They expire in a year. We have to make them permanent. The Democrats will fight. If they don't, if they're not made permanent, it's a tremendous tax increase and we're not going to let that happen. And I will once again cut a record number of job killing regulations. You know, some people, I went to some of my friends or people, in some cases they're not my friends, they're my enemies. I hate them. But they're big business. I said, what was more important for you? The tax cuts or the regulation cuts? Every single one of them said the regulation cuts. Can you believe it? I was surprised, actually. But uh, we cut regulations at levels that nobody's ever seen. We cut more regulations than any president in history before, by far. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, we win all together. We're going to win. We will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. Before I take office, president-elect, I'll get it settled. I know Putin. Get along with them. I know Zelensky. Get along with them. We're going to settle it. That's a tremendous, a tremendous problem that would have never, think of it, the sad, would have never happened. You know, it's one thing you settle. You can never make a settlement like you could. If we could have done settlement, we didn't even have to do, Putin would have never done it. We didn't even have to do a settlement. But we could have made a settlement. All those cities would be thriving now. The beautiful golden domes that are ripped down, a thousand-year-old buildings that are ripped down. You can never replace it. All those lives that are lost. The lives that are lost are so much greater than what you're being told. The lives are, it's just tremendous. I'll get it solved. I'll get it solved before I even get into office. We will restore peace through strength. And they understand that. There's a great man, a great leader in Europe, Viktor Orban. He's the, he's the prime minister of Hungary. He's a very great leader, very strong man. Some people don't like him because he's too strong. It's nice to have a strong man running your country. But he, he was being interviewed a month ago. It was an incredible statement. In fact, I should use it in an ad, but we don't take ads. So far, we haven't needed them because we're doing well. But I wish you'd use it. But Viktor Orban, one of the most respected, one of the toughest leaders, one of the most respected, they said, what's going on? The whole world is burning. He said, what's going on is Trump is no longer in office. When he was in office, China was afraid of him. He used the word afraid. I'd rather say respect. But he said China was afraid of him. Russia was afraid of him. I ended the Russian pipeline. Remember? I, that was the biggest thing they ever did. I ended it. It was dead. And then Biden came along, and the first week he approved it, going all over Europe. But he said, when Trump was president, they said, what would you do? He said, I would do whatever is possible to get Trump elected president again, and everything will stop. So I was very honored by it. Right? Can I ask a, a group of ladies, they follow me all over, I don't know what the hell's with their social life or their husbands. They come from North Carolina. There's like a hundred of them. They're represented tonight by probably 30, but, and they always seem to have good seats. You know, they get good seats. Somewhere along the line, they know people in my campaign. I always notice, but could you stand up? They've, this is their 117th rally. So beautiful. They're so beautiful. I don't know if their husbands are exactly thrilled by this. But this is number 117. Can you believe that? And then, of course, we have front row Joes. They follow me all over the place. I can't get rid of these guys. Thank you, fellas. Thank you very much. So honored. So honored. Are your marriages still good? Probably better, right? <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. I really, that really is an honor. 117. 
I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you, and I will make it, and I will keep it. I will prevent World War III. We've never been so close. You just have to check out your news. And we will build an iron dome over our country, a state-of-the-art missile defense shield made in the USA. We do it for other countries, that we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for other countries. All made in the USA. I will also defend our great veterans. Al is around here someplace. Where is Al? Al. The head, the king of the veterans, I call him. Al, have I been good to the veterans? I've done a great job. Okay. Well, we're going to do it, Al. He said, he said well, they, the veterans say I was the greatest president for veterans, you know. We, uh, we had a tremendous problem where the veterans weren't being taken care of, and I gave them immediate service if they weren't able to see a doctor. You know, a lot of them would, couldn't see. They would be waiting, what, for two, three months even to just get an appointment. Anybody that couldn't get to see, and I got this approved by Congress, anybody couldn't see a doctor, you go immediately out. We have a whole group of doctors surrounding all of the hospitals. We have deals negotiated with them. You get taken care of by those doctors. It worked out so incredibly well, so unbelievably well. We also had something, you know, we have a lot of sadists that used to work, horrible people, thieves, sadists who used to work. We couldn't get them out because of civil service laws. I got it done, passed in Congress, not easy. They've been trying to get it done for 58 years. And the other with the veterans, they were trying to get that for 52 years. I got them both done. We fired 8,000 people that were sadists and thieves and crooks. We had one case in Arizona where people got caught stealing $400,000 and they couldn't fire them. They weren't allowed to fire them. They got caught stealing $400,000 and you couldn't fire them. And they got fired very quickly and then some. I will ask Congress to build the full-service VA hospital, Al, right here in New Hampshire. You know, you're the only state in the union. Do you know that? You're the only state in the union that doesn't have a full-service VA hospital. And we have had such an incredible relationship with your state. We are going to build a uh, hospital for our veterans right here in New Hampshire. You just have to give me the location. Give me the best location. I will direct a completely overhaul DOJ to investigate every radical, out-of-control prosecutor in America for the illegal, racist, in reverse enforcement of the law. And I am also going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement, every police officer and all law enforcement, all throughout the United States to protect them. It's called indemnification. I'm going to indemnify them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong action on crime. They're told not to touch it, not to stop it. We're going to, and they're afraid to do it. They lose everything. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they've ever been before. We're going to stop crime in our cities. We're going to stop it through strong law enforcement. You can't walk down the street of these cities nowadays without being shot or mugged or beat up or pushed into a subway train. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, rebuild it. It'll be a capital like no other. Right now, you walk down the streets of the capital. Last night, three people shot. Every day, people are shot. Our capital is a disgrace. I was there for one of these fake trials the other day, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm driving down a major thoroughfare, let's not even mention it, and there was so much garbage that we're literally driving over cartons and boxes and uh, cans and beer. I say, what a disgrace. The median in between lanes, you know, the median was all falling down, the, the crappy steel median that they use in this country for some reason. Somebody does a very good job with getting that contract. Because have you ever seen these things? They put them up and... The sun bends it. They look like hell after like two weeks. What kind of crap is that? But they're all over the place. And they all know what I'm talking about, too. Somebody, somebody did a great job of selling. Whoever the hell it is, they're rich as hell. But we're going to straighten out our cities. We're going to straighten out our cities. And we're going to take over the capital of the United States. And we're going to run it in the federal government. It's going to be run properly and safely. Nobody's going to get shot. And if they do, those people are in big trouble that did it. It'll become, again, the most beautiful capital and the safest capital anywhere in the world. No, but can you imagine you're a foreign dignity and you're coming into the United States 
and you're driving over garbage and you see the medians falling and you see asphalt that has potholes all over the place. What a, what a scene. And I'm telling you, four years ago when I was here, it was, I used to go crazy with that. Get that street clean. It wasn't my job. You know, you have a mayor, right? But you have a mayor and they're supposed to do it, but we're going to take it over. We're going to federalize it and we're going to run it in the federal government. It's going to be run properly, really properly and safely on day one. I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children to destroy their lives. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And it's hard to believe that we have to even say this. It's so ridiculous. I will keep men out of women's sports totally done. And as I did for four years, perfectly, I will fully uphold our great Second Amendment. We have to. We have no choice. And I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. Do you know what that means? A big deal. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech again in our country. I will secure our elections and as I said, our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. But until then, Republicans must win. We have to win. You have to get out and vote on Tuesday. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration has done. If you look at what they've done on our border, what they've done to our military, what they've done to everything, look at interest rates. We used to have the lowest interest rates ever. Now we have the highest. Nobody can buy houses. What they've done to this country is incredible, and especially having to do with crime and other such things. The border is one of the great catastrophes, I think, in the world. The border is one of the greatest catastrophes that have ever happened and embarrassments. And then you go back again to Afghanistan. I defeat ISIS totally. They said you couldn't do it. It would take four or five years. I did it in three months, right? General Raisin Cain, right? Do you ever hear that, sir? Good general. We have some great generals, I'll tell you. You don't see him on television, though. So if you want to save America, then this Tuesday, January 23rd, you must vote for a man named Trump. Did you ever hear of him? <laughs> and as I said earlier, the details, and, and just take it down just in case you want some, but we can't take, we have to get everybody, nh.donaldjtrump.com. So in conclusion, who the hell wants this to end? I don't want it to end. I had a friend, you know, he wanted to become a politician. He's a very successful guy, one of the most successful people. I don't want to get him embarrassed, but and he wants to be a politician. I said, what's the problem? Why don't you do it? Just go ahead, do it. You'd be good. You had a lot of money. You've done that. He said, I have one problem. What? He has stage fright. I said, stage fright. That doesn't sound good. If you have stage fright, I told him, if you have stage fright, this is the wrong business for you. But we feel comfortable together, right? You know? People say, how do you do that? You go up for two hours and you talk, and I would say 80% without these crazy things, right? But uh, how do you do that? And I say, there's such love in the room. I really mean this. It's easy, because there's such love in the room. It's like, not that hard to do, believe it or not. Thank you. It's true. There's so much love. Together, we're taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. We've never seen anything like it. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we are fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. This nation belongs to you. This is your home, this is your heritage, and our American liberty is your God-given right. This is your God-given right. 
From Concord to Conway, from Plymouth to Portsmouth, and from Meredith to Manchester, you inherit the legacy of red-blooded New Hampshire patriots who live by that immortal motto, live free or die. Have you heard of that before? We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the ocean, settled a continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the greatest skyscrapers in the world, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. But now, we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in 50 years, where banks are collapsing and interest rates are skyrocketing. Likewise, we are a nation where energy costs have reached the highest levels in our history, where we are no longer energy independent or energy dominant as we were just a few short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. Yet we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country anywhere in the world. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be reducing their oil production while at the same time substantially increasing the price. And we met that threat by announcing that we will no longer be drilling for oil in large areas of Alaska or elsewhere on our land. We are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal. Yet everyone knows that the Green New Scam is fake and will lead to our destruction. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars, despite the fact that they don't go far. So sad. <laughs> they also cost too much, and whose batteries are produced in China with materials only available in China when an unlimited amount of gasoline is available inexpensively in the United States, but not available in China. And now we are a nation that wants to make our revered and very powerful army tanks, the best anywhere in the world, all electric, so that despite the fact that they are also not able to go far, Fewer pollutants will be released into the air as we blast through enemy territory in an environmentally friendly way. And they also want to make our jet fighters with a green stamp of energy savings, though losing 15% efficiency, but allowing us to keep our enemy's atmosphere clean of emissions as we viciously and unceremoniously attack them at levels never seen before. Who are these people that would do this to us? Who are these people who would ruin our country? We are a nation that ended oil exploration and production in the U.S. just as the price of oil reached an all-time high. What other country would do such a foolish, foolish thing? So self-destructive it is. Can we be energy independent? And again, can we be even energy dominant? Yes, oh yes, and very quickly, says President Trump. We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving dead soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment in the world. 
and also abandoning Bagram, one of the biggest military air bases anywhere in the world. And only one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. Think of that. And we are a nation that allowed Russia and Ukraine to fight, killing hundreds of thousands of people. And it will only get worse. It would never have happened with me as your president. And for four straight years, it didn't happen. Likewise, the horrifying attack on Israel would never have happened. They wouldn't have even thought of doing such a thing if President Trump was in the Oval Office. Iran was broke under President Trump. They didn't have the money to fund Hamas or Hezbollah and all of the other instruments of terror that were funded were going without any funds at all. But those sanctions were lifted by a very corrupt Biden administration and now Iran is a rich country with $200 billion and another $6 billion for hostages and $10 billion for electricity to Iraq, all compliments of the incompetent Biden administration. And China, with Taiwan, is next. We are a nation that allows radical left terrorists to violently attack our cities, leaving behind massive destruction and death. And nothing happens to the criminals that do these terrible things. There is no punishment, but when people who love our country protest on January 6th in Washington, D.C., they become hostages unfairly imprisoned for long, long periods of time. We are a third world nation that has weaponized its law enforcement against the opposing political party like never, ever before. We've got a federal bureau of investigation that won't allow bad election changing facts to be presented to the public and which offers one million dollars to a writer of fiction about Donald J. Trump to lie and say it was fact where Hunter Biden's laptop from hell was Russian disinformation and the FBI knew it wasn't. But 51 intelligence agents said it was. And the Department of Justice that refuses to investigate egregious acts of voting irregularities and fraud. And we have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired and in no condition to lead and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war, which would be World War III and far more devastating than any of the previous world wars, because the weaponry that no one has even thought about is so devastating, so far beyond anything ever thought before. We are a nation that no longer has a free and fair press. Fake news is all you get. And they are indeed the enemy of the people. They refuse to discuss the Biden crime family, but enjoy covering the false indictments of Donald J. Trump, who has done nothing wrong except win an election that wasn't anticipated by them. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed where crime is rampant and out of control like never before. And we are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions and trillions of dollars it has taken from us to build a military to rival our own. And less than three years ago, we had Iran, China, Russia, North Korea and Czech. They respected us. They were afraid of us. They weren't going to do a thing against us, and everyone knows it. And now Russia and China are holding summits to carve up the rest of the world. And perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer admired, respected, or listened to on the world stage. We are a nation that in many ways has become a joke. And we are a nation that is hostile to liberty, freedom, faith, and even God. We are a nation whose economy is collapsing into a cesspool of ruin, whose supply chain is broken, whose stores are not stocked, whose deliveries are not coming, and whose educational system is ranked at the bottom of every single list. 
We are a nation that just sold a once great company, United States Steel, to Japan. We are a nation whose stock market continued success is totally contingent on MAGA winning the next election. We are a nation where large packs of sadistic criminals and thieves are allowed to go into stores and openly rob them, beat up and kill their workers and customers, and leave with armloads of goods, but with no retribution, where the authority of our great police has been taken, where their families and pensions have been threatened, and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement. We are a nation where fentanyl and other forms of illegal drugs are easier to get than groceries to feed our beautiful families. We have become a drug-infested, crime-ridden nation, which is incapable of solving even the simplest of problems. We will institute the powerful death penalty for drug dealers where each dealer is responsible for the death during their lives of over 500 people or more. Mothers will never again be forced to watch their children overdosing and hopelessly dying in the arms of screaming, what can I do, what can I do? I want my child back. We are a nation whose once revered airports are dirty, crowded mess. You sit and wait for hours and then are notified that the planes won't leave. They have no idea when they will where ticket prices have tripled. They don't have the pilots to fly the planes. They don't have the qualified air traffic controllers. And they just don't know what the hell they're doing. We are a nation that screens its citizens viciously at all ports. Every single port. But if you're an illegal alien, you're allowed to flow through all gates by the millions and millions and millions. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, its willpower, and its strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp. And we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all. We will be a liberated country again. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend, we will not break, we will not yield. We will never give in, we will never give up, and we will never, ever back down. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House, and we will take back our country on Election Day 2024. The great silent majority is rising like never before, and under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make 
America great again. Thank you, New Hampshire. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.